Hi everyone, Amitofo, greeting from Taiwan. I'm Changshen from Damajuan Mountain. First, I would like to thank Hamao Science Center for inviting me to this wonderful conference and give me this honor to present my paper about Bikini Senka in Taiwan. However, due to the pandemic and the visa reason, I cannot attend this conference in person. So I truly miss you all there. Now I use this video to present my paper and I prepare quite some beautiful photos in my PowerPoint. So hope you all will enjoy this presentation. Okay, my paper topic, the title is called Bikuni Sanghas and the Buddhist Revival in Taiwan. This paper explores a significant phenomenon of women's religious leadership in contemporary Taiwanese Buddhism. My research draws Bikunis in Fogongshan Monastery, Ciji Foundation, and Damadron Mountain, the three internationally best known transnational Buddhist organizations, to discuss the development of Bikuni Sanghas in relationship to modern Buddhist reform developed in Taiwanese society. At the end, I will also give some of my reflection on this topic. Uh, let's look at this world map. You can see Taiwan is kind of tiny here. <laughs> But now, in contemporary Buddhism, we have the greatest number of female monastics in Taiwan. It's about uh, 15,000. And uh, to the most diverse female monastic sanghas in the world. And the ratio of nuns to monks in Taiwan is 3 to 1. So we have a lot of monks here. And this phenomenon in Taiwanese Buddhism about Buddhist nuns is unprecedented in Buddhist history. In contrast to the inferior and the minority status of Buddhist women in pre-modern China, the disproportionate number of female monastics in Taiwan along with their outstanding accomplishments, attracts scholars to discuss the underlying reasons for this so-called Taiwan miracle. This phrase is a phrase used to refer to the rapid industrialization and economic takeoff in the post-war period. The astonishing contribution and leadership of Buddhist women in post-war Taiwan did not appear in vacuum. There, is, there are reasons. The first reason is the gender egalitarian educational and the instructional opportunity arising from the modern Buddhist revival movement in post-war Taiwan. Master Tai Xu was the most prominent leader of modern Buddhist reform movement in China. He proposed what he called Buddhism for the human realm, Ren Tian Fou Jiao, or Ren Shen Fou Jiao, which extended the religious scope to social issues, national welfare, and the world peace. In the post war period, however, Tai Xi's Buddhist reforms spread not in communist China, but in the newly decolonized Taiwan. After the civil war in China in 1949, monks who did not trust communism in regard to religious freed from mainland China to Taiwan. Many of these monks were Buddhist leaders in China at that time. They took Taiwan as the foundation of the revival of Buddhism. Under this strong revival mission, 
To them, nuns together with monks were the agents of the, this revival movement. Nuns as well as monks, therefore, must be trained well and must obtain an excellent education in order to transmit the lineage and perform ministry service professionally. The male masters advocated this importance of nuns' education and promote gender egalitarian educational and the importance of Dharma instruction, monastery operation, and the social outreach for nuns. Okay, there's another reason for the rising of Buddhist women's leadership. That is, the women's agency developed along with Taiwanese modernization. The economic growth and the compulsory education mandated by government since the late 60s in Taiwan give space for women to be economically and socially independent. Rather than the path of path in traditional family structure that is based on Confucianism, in which a woman should marry, give birth, and stay home to serve his household, her husband, his parents, and their raised children, women chose to become Buddhist clergy. The Buddhist monastic practice as well as ministry provides women the opportunity not only have an independent life of spiritual pursuit. Additionally, being a nun also offers a chance to develop and utilize professional skills, live in broader social networks, and develop uh, and devote their energy to public sphere for the betterment of society. Also, the women rights movement in the, in the Taiwanese democratization process since the late 80s also increases gender equality conscious in a tremendous way. So place against the background of women's spiritual liberation in modern Buddhist revival and Taiwanese modernity. And now offer Fo Guang Shan, Ji and the Dharma Draw Mountain, Faku Shan, these three bikini sanghas and their development. Three of them present different models of Buddhist nuns leadership in Taiwan. First is Fo Guang Shan nuns. Fo Guang Shan sangha was the first one established in the 50s and its organization was officially founded in 1967. As the largest monastery in Taiwan, Fo Guang Shan now has more than 1,300 1, monastics, which around more than 1,000 nuns and 2 to 300 monks. So their ratio of nuns to monks are, is 6 to 1. Okay. Claiming a member of over 1 million in Taiwan and 3 million overseas, Fo Guang Shan now has nearly 300 temples in five continents. Monks are the mostly in charge of more than 6, uh, 70 temples in Taiwan, and the nuns are mostly in charge of more than 200 temples overseas. Uh, Fo Guang Shan's founder is Master Xin Yun, Xin Yun Da Shi, Xin Yun Fa Shi. Founder Xin Yun is well known for his gender equality among contemporary Chinese Buddhist masters. Okay, this picture is uh, Xin Yun Fa Shi, Master Xin Yun, and uh, Fo Guang Shan Sengas. Um, in a trip, I think. So, Master Xin is here. So, others are mostly nuns, actually, and uh, some monks are in this picture. Uh, when I began to do research and uh, collect papers on Bikuni in Fogongshan, the limited resource of empirical finding was not unexpected. However, 
One thing which indeed surprised me was that the one who wrote most about Nancy for Gongshan was actually their master Xin Yun. Xin Yun Bashi wrote down in detail the great contribution of his bhikkhuni disciples to the establishment and development of Gongshan and expressed his gratitude and com compliment to their devotional to Buddhism. Xin Yun praised Cizhuang Bashi, Venerable Cizhuang. I think Cizhuang Bashi is here. The former abbey of Xilai Temple uh, in, in LA. Okay. Xilai Temple is the largest Chinese Buddhist temple overseas, who established temples around the world. So Xin Yun Fa Shi praised uh, pra praise Zhuang Fa Shi and say that Zhuang has been thrifty and diligent throughout her life. She preaches Dharma not for herself. She doesn't, she doesn't seek any fame and the benefits and never promotes herself. She has done so many things for Buddhism. Looking at the bhikkhunis in Taiwan today, who can compare with her? So, regard to Zi Hui, Venerable Zi Hui, I think Zi Hui Fa Shi is here. Yeah, this is Zi Hui Fa Shi. Who assists in the establishment of four universities, that is the University of the West in the United States, Bogong University and the Nanhua University in Taiwan, and the Nanting Institute in Australia. And the Master Xin Yin said, for more than 60 years, she, that is Zi Hui Fa Shi, has never asked to take a day off. She also never said she wanted to go home. Her entire life really fits an, an old saying. That is, the physical body is handed over to monastery and the personal life is handed over to the Dharma protector deities. In the past 2000 years of Chinese Buddhism, there have been many outstanding bhikkhunis. But in terms of education, how many people could be like Zhu Hui? to help to establish several universities, invite so many excellent teachers, and develop, develop Buddhist education all over her, the world. So among over 1,000 bhikkhunis in Foguangshan, uh, about 200 hold MA or PhD degrees, and the others have different kinds of talent in social welfare, culture, and art language, temple management, education, and the publication. And they devote themselves to Dharma outreach vocations. So next is, uh, the second is Siji Foundation, Nuns in Siji. Different from Fogongshan and Dharma Drum Mountain, in which the monastic Sangha is the crown and takes the leadership role in organization, Siji organization is run by lay people, and only their founder and the spiritual leader is a monastic, the charismatic bhikkhuni master Zheng Yan. As the largest Buddhist organization among the Great Four Mountain, we usually say Great Four Mountain, that is the, the biggest four Buddhist organization in Taiwan. In addition to the three I presented, the, the first one is Zhong Tai Chan Si. Okay, so Ciji was founded in 1966 and claimed nearly 5 million members in the world. That is the one who regularly donate money. Ciji's origin starts from the relief donation in traditional Taiwanese, we call vegetable, vegetable market, Cai Shi Chang with housewives as the main force. Through word of mouth, these housewives passed on Zheng Yin's idea of helping the poor and gradually the network of volunteers and the members was expanded. Gradually, Ciji developed four major mission institutes or vocations. 
that is charity, medical care, education, and culture. This is Masha Zhen Yan. I believe most of you know, see, know her and this, heard about her. And uh, Master Zheng Yin really, uh, uh, how to say, the uh, matriarch or in uh, uh, matriarch, yeah, in, in contemporary Taiwanese Buddhism. Okay. Neo Master. Okay. Uh, Suji's model separates the monastery and the organization. The former led by monastics and the later led by the laity. In this model, monastic, monastics are not in charge of Ciji mission institutions, but live in a traditional monastery life. Bikuni Sangha of Ciji live in the still thought about nunnery, Jing Si Jing Shi in Hualien. That is also the Ciji's headquarters. The abbot is the spiritual home for all Suji members around the world. Chen Yan lives in the abbot and gives a breakfast Dharma talk every morning and broadcasting globally to members around the world. Each year, members overseas and in Taiwan come back to the abbot as a tour of pilgrimage. about a uh, Buddhist nun in Ziji. Actually, there is scarce information about nuns there. Only a few clips produced by Ziji Foundation itself. It is recorded that in uh, 2014, there are around 200, actually it says 178 nearly 200 nuns ordained by Zhen Yan and live in the airport. In contrast to Fogongshan Bikun is busy with outreach, nuns in Suji live in a traditional farming monastic life, overcome difficulties with diligence and frugality is the airport's motto. Quietly living in the airport and working on the farm and in the factories, nuns in Ziji practice and de deliver Dharma by the famous slogan, practice by doing, zuo zhong xue, or awakened by doing, zuo zhong jue. As Venerable De Jia, this is Venerable De Jia, uh, describe her difficult, process of inventing and promoting jin si soap. Uh, it's, it's the soap, yeah, the soap making. Jin si is the, their brand, yeah, the, the product they made, not made called jin si, okay. And what she learned from it, she said, to mass produce, it was not economical, so why did I promote it? I'm not upset about the sales. I'm ups I was upset the ideal of the soap, that is the environmental protection and learning to connect to nature, was not be received. I want more people to start learning from Buddha, be because the soap helps us to understand the world, the condition and the roots of the world. In order to achieve that state of mind, I feel that if Jin Shi soap can simultaneously spread the Dharma and bring us to Bring us the Dharma food for the airport community. That will be the most joyful things in our lives. When you give up the idea of it is failure in the world, no matter what your life is, as long as you don't give up what you are doing, you have a successful life. This was the biggest realization when I made the soap. Yeah. The Jia, Marimou Zhejia goes through the process of, of inventing the Jinsu soap. Yeah. Nuns in Ziji, their main work duty is to produce products such as handmade candles, soap, 
instant rice and the noodles, etc. There are 21 products so far, and their brands are called Jing Si. This, 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 Jing Si. Yeah. These products are all invented and all made by Zhi Nangs themselves. The Apple does not accept does not accept donations, and every meal at the Apple is provided by resident nuns service and offering. Through the temple economy is mainly based on the income from selling these products. The purpose of making these products is not for profit, but for disaster relief and the promoting environmentalist green idea. This is instant, instant rice. And delicious, not bad. Yeah, it's for disaster relief. And I sometimes I boil it, yeah. And this is the uh, herb tea. Uh, it's good. It can it hurt. It can prevent COVID nineteen. Yeah, get COVID nineteen. So now it's a uh, it's sold out on the on uh uh sold out online. So now it's kind of hard to buy it. <laughs> Very popular in Taiwan right now. Okay, the third one is Damajang Mountain. Damajang Mountain is uh, the Bikuni Sangha's model is similar as Fogongshan. That is the Sangha is the crown for the organization. Yeah, uh, the Monai Sangha is the crown for organization. Damajang Mountain established in late 70s and officially founded in 1989. As of 2022, that is uh, this year, uh, Damajang consists of around 300 monastics with around 240 females, nuns, and uh, 60 monks. So our ratio is 4 to 1. The age of this monastery range from early 20s to 70s. And their educational backgrounds range from high school diplomas, diplomas to PhDs. This is founder Master Shen Yan is my teacher. And this is Damadra Mountain and uh, the headquarter and this Chen Ho. Now my work is in Chen Ho and uh, Damadra Mountain is beautiful and uh, Welcome you all to visit us. Hope uh, to see you someday here. To discuss Dharma Drum Nouns, I highlight points of transformation in the monastery as well as paradigm shift in monastic life and the religious governance. Then divide the development of Dharma Drum Mountain into a further three periods. First is farming chain, mostly is uh, 80s, 80s, and the social engagement is 90s, and uh, religious education is uh, since uh, millennium. Yeah. Through exploring the transformation of the monastery, we can understand what nuns' life are like in a modern monastery that it has decreased gender-based segregation and hierarchy to become a gender-neutrally modern Buddhist organization. So first, the farming Chan period is our early period in monastery. Namadram has been a mixed gender monastery Sangha. The monks and nuns Sangha run ran their monastic education and the mentoring guidance independently, independently. However, on the organizational level, they work and operated the affairs of the monastery together. This gender model in monastery was a new method of operation. It's like for Gongshan too. Different from the gender segregate, segregate monastery in the traditional Chan community, in which monks and the nuns live and uh, work separately in their own temples. And the monks enjoy privilege with 
regard to both social respect and resources. So here you can see this picture is Master Shen Yan. Master Shen Yan is doing chore the Brahmin with nuns and uh, maybe some monks here too. So people in early time, uh, a lot of time, not a lot, just quite some time we, uh, uh, we do uh, this uh, farming chore. And uh, also in kitchen and they do some, uh, some, some chores. In this mixed gender monastery, monks and nuns had equal opportunities in learning and practice the Dharma, and they also had equal responsibility of duties. As the former director in chief, Brambo Guoguang described, everyone took turns at all duties in the temple, no matter whether you were a monk or a nun. Monks also worked in the kitchen, and the nuns could be Master Shen Yan's attendant or secretary as well. The idea of monastic training is in Shifu, Master Shen Yan's mind is that every monastic should know how to operate the different tasks in a temple, instead of operating in accordance with an ideological gender division of labor. Since our Sangha was small at that time, we were like a big family. Monks and nuns were like brothers and sisters. Some monks that were sometimes not so welcome among the male Sangha monastics would come to the nuns' side, hang out with us more in order to take a break from his intense surroundings. This were no problem raised because the Sangha was a mixed gender. Okay, the social engagement period is the second period. In this period, present nuns in the construction stage of Dhammadra Mountain. This period, the process of organization construction, along with its formation of a systematic Sangha education, produced a modern female Chan teacher, not only practicing and teaching in a temple, but also engaging in society following its transformation to a socially engaged temple. The scale of the monastery also expanded dramatically, applying change in the office, in interactions with followers and in organization activities. These engaged Chen women, Chen nuns are significantly different from those who practice Chen solitarily, solitarily and individually in the past. So in this in this stage, this period, the monastic gradually become more in, uh, uh, engaged in society. So we held a very large uh, scale uh, activities, yeah, like this, yeah, and uh, um, and also you know, the outreach start to outreach to society a lot. And uh, also the monks and nuns, the number increased a lot in this period. The third day, uh, period is called religion as education. Is this basically now we are, uh, uh, it's like this, uh, this model. Yeah. This period illustrates how Buddhist nuns are trained today in DDM's mature institutionalized and systematic Sangha education system by emphasizing both theory and practice. In 2005, uh, Dhamma headquarters named Dhamma Mountain World Center for Buddhist Education has its inauguration ceremony. The DDM organization are operated under the mission of a threefold educational vision academic education, public Buddhist education, and social care education. This institutionalized Chen monastic training produced nuns leadership, not only by applying Chen to modern temple op operation, but also by giving rise to the vow to prop 
propagate the chain globally. So we, um, we, our uh, Dhamma Drown Sengkang University is established in 2001. So these are uh, cemetery students, and these are nuns, my Dhamma sisters. And uh, also nuns guiding retreat, yeah, like this, yeah, guiding seven day retreats. And also do global outreach, yeah, and uh, guiding meditation overseas. Okay, so now I would like to um, give some of my reflections on Bikuni Sankas in Taiwan and its development. Two emergent issues might be worthwhile to observe in the future. First, through, though Buddhist nuns in this large organization are successfully engaged in society and connects religion with modern social needs, the issue of how to balance time spent on the practice of of monasticism oh, uh, versus time spent on social engaged activities is a matter of current debate. Second, under the current influence of global neoliberalism, commodification not only includes consumption of culture, but also influences the realms of education as well as religion. The institutionalization of religious governance embedded in its logic of instrumental rationality is not without its issues. Its instrumental rationality emphasized productivity, efficiency, and the calculation and the calculations. Everyone should be treated the same and uh, arranged equal, e equally for convenient, convenience, regardless of his or her gender. So, the value placed on this productivity, efficiency, and the calculation in this instrumental rationality also results in a certain ascetic mind, mindset. So though the gender hierarchy is decreased because this emphasis on the uh, productivity and the, this kind of instrumental rationality, yeah. but on the other hand, a certain aesthetic mind aesthetic mindset that is uh, working toward the me uh, also that sometimes this kind of method um, you know, work hard etc holding this mindset and uh, working toward the so-called mission of Buddhist revival Buddhists now tend to overwork themselves which fits into the gender stereotype of women receiving social recognition only through sacrifice the question is how to balance Dharma transmission and outreach with the commodification of religion. That is, how to spread Dharma for the benefit of sentient beings as opposed to getting caught up in the logic of marketing and the commodification of Dharma activities. Corpor corporatizing the monastery and overloading the clergy. These are all becoming important issues in modern global Buddhism. So, okay. So, um, this is uh, this reflection, my reflections. So, yes, Buddhist revival is uh, important, and uh, uh, Dhamma outreach um, is important, but also the uh, also balance the time. Uh, between the uh, Dharma outreach, engaging society, and also practice our own uh, meditation practice uh, or other Dharma practice uh, is, is important. The, it's an issue we are debating right now. Yeah. So my conclusion is that in contemporary Taiwanese Buddhism, the astonishing contribution and achievements of Buddhist nuns rare in Chinese or even in world Buddhist history. 
Now exploring Bikuni Senga in the three largest, through exploring Bikuni Senga in the three largest transnational Buddhist organization in Taiwan, Pogongshan, Tsuji, and the Dhamma Drum, Fakushan. We can see the modern Chinese Buddhist revival movement embedded in post-war Taiwan enables Buddhists now to exercise their leadership roles not only in Buddhist circles but also in secular society. However, while making miracles in history, nuns in Taiwan also faced in the challenge of how to balance their time and the, for practice and the social engaged activities to actualize the idea of transcendental non-duality of inner worldly social practice and outer worldly, outer worldly in the Buddhism for the human realm. So we, we say it's something like, uh, yeah. Although much more de detailed inquiry needs to be done on the subject, I hope my work has further enriched the historical record and empowered both female and male Buddhist practitioners around the world. Thank you for listening and I wish you all the best and have a good time in conference. Omitofo.